Through one lens, he does not delight in the death of anyone. And through another lens, as he sees it as part of the whole he does. Let's go and show you guys where uh, Ballgate came from. Uh, How deranged. How much can you sit there and hold this book in your hands and say you actually believe it? How far can you go in how you twist what it says? Recently, I was on Soteriology 101 with uh, Dr. Leighton Flowers, and I said some things that kind of blew up the internet. There is not a scintilla of honesty in what Warren McGrew said. That is an absolute lie, Warren. That's an absolute lie. Why you... what he's doing? Bully. Why you bullying me? Why, why are you saying things like that? Lies, 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 yeah. It's an apology. Hey guys, it should also be noted, I have not watched this video all the way through. I wanted to be surprised a little bit. Calling comment to make... It's, oh, it's horrible. I, I, I wow, uh, I don't even know how to, how to address it. But anyway. What was it that I said? What was so terribly offensive that these, these grown men became so incensed and so indignant, so terribly upset and emotional that they called me a liar and attacked my character? I, um, I criticize the doctrine of infant damnation. Yeah, you can't be perfect. That condemns you. Oh, yeah, you also can't confess your imperfections. So they're both bad news. And then the good news is some of you are picked unilaterally before you're ever born. And if you are, happen to be one of those, then that's really good news for you. If it happens to be some of your children aren't picked and some of your friends aren't picked, that's bad news too, but if you're picked, you can at least count on that as being good news. A few moments later. Uh, you, you, and, made a, you made mention, Leighton, of like, well, you know, if I'm elect and my children aren't, you know, that's okay. And I just wanted to highlight how that's the same kind of spirit and mindset that the ancient worshipers of pagan deities would engage in when they would sacrifice their children to Baal. That would be... A <laughs> <laughs> right there. That's what uh, set the Christian internet space ablaze. The Christians who believe in this, the consistency of Calvinism, because if some are not picked from the foundation of the world, it won't matter what age they are. They could be a one-year-old. They could be a two-minute old. It doesn't matter. They could be in the womb, actually. If they're not picked, they're not picked. And where are they going to go if they're not picked? To hell. That's where they're going to go. Several days later. <laughs> There you go. One minute of absolute foolishness. Uh, I have no respect for anyone who spoke and what was just said. It's one of the dumbest things I've ever, one of the dumbest objections I've ever heard anyone make. Boom. Roasted. Hey, if it's so dumb, we should talk about uh, a debate. Like, seriously. For those of you who do not know, James White is not going to debate. I've never heard anything more stupid in my life. There is not a scintilla of honesty in what Warren McGrew said. He's not a stupid man, so he's just a massively dishonest man. Shut up. In determinism, in Calvinism, it does not matter what you think about the other person in front of you. If God has already chosen some things, oh, excuse me, oh, who? Oh, Oh, not some things, all things. We better get that straightened out first. God chooses all things, decrees all things, period. You cannot get around that in Calvinism. That's why eventually um, all Calvinists who take Calvinism seriously and want to be what they believe is the best Christian to be, they eventually accept all five points. You destroy one, you destroy them all. That's why more, Warren McGrew has been doing a fantastic job at attacking total depravity, which by the way, I'll show you guys, in Romans chapter one alone, total depravity gets destroyed. The Bible tells us to choose either life or death. Choosing should not be possible. I'm going to show you guys a couple of other things too. We're going to go over what John Piper, another Calvinist, says about does God enjoy destroying the wicked? If he says from the beginning who's going to be saved and who isn't, then he's going to destroy the wicked. So he chooses not to save, but he does choose to destroy. He's going to choose to destroy those people that he chose not to save. But if we skip down here to two lenses, I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, but whatever the Lord pleases, he does. Pleased by all that he does and all that he permits in the world, he has his reasons for doing it in the wide angle lens of things. So if God decrees all things that come to pass, 
period, then he must take pleasure in all those things. He decreed them, right? There's no way around that. Through one lens, he does not delight in the death of anyone. And through another lens, as he sees it as part of the whole, he does. So it's like, no, but yes. This actually turns into God creating sin. If God decrees all things that come to pass, and he actually enjoys destroying the wicked, regardless of age, that's why babies would end up in hell in their system. What does it make God? If this system is true, then there are some of you that are created to be wicked. You wouldn't know it. There's someone who could be a devoted Christian, and in 20 years, they are a serial killer, a devil worshiper. And if that did happen to a Christian who then decided to do that, then they were never a Christian to begin with, right? Guys, this is wicked. This is evil. And this is not the God of the Bible. It's actually much closer to Allah. If you look at Islam, Allah, which is not God, it's not Yahweh, is who does this. What's bold here is not what I've written. This depravity affects every part of the human experience, and spiritually, we are dead in trespasses and sins. This is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. This doctrine does not teach that each man is as wicked as he could be. So what I'm going to be reading from is Romans chapter 1. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. To verse 19, since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. Wait a minute! What's the point of something being plain to you if you can't choose? What's God waiting on? For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen once again. What's the point in that? Being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Excuse for what? But their thinking became futile. It became futile. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. Just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind. That was easy. So that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. You are not born totally depraved. It is a process. 